Proverbs chapter 4 and look at verse 13. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 13. Young people, listen at me. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked. You see how much trouble young people could save if they'd listen to that verse right there? Think of all the young people that's in juvenile center this morning that didn't listen to that verse. You know how to wind up going to juvenile center and juvie, as y'all call it, or, or drug rehab? Don't do what that verse says. Do what that verse says, and you'll never go to jail. It says, it says Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fail, fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light. There's our church in the Bible. As the shining light that shineth more and more under the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Again, verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Now, I want to use that as a thought this morning. And I want to preach to you on a message that I got the thought from, from a question that they ask young people. I will preach to you this morning on life's three greatest questions. They did a survey of some of the smartest, intellectually wise, teenage or young people in America, 20, 21, 22 years old, students at Harvard. These are considered the great hope of our nation. They took the smartest young people in America, a college age, and they did a survey and they said, what are the, the three greatest questions that you have. The smartest, intelligent-wise, young people in America answer three questions. They said the greatest questions we have as young people today are, number one, where did I come from? Number two, what am I doing here? And number three, where am I going? The biggest question on young people's mind today is, what... How did we get here? What? Uh, how did all this start? Now you may be saying, you're a young person here this morning and say, well I never thought that. You're not in the most intelligent young people in America. The, the smartest ones have thought and sat and thought, where did I come from? How did I get here? How did we even get on this planet? And the second question is, what am I doing here? What is the purpose of life? I'll never forget thinking, I, I'll never forget thinking that when I was 16 years old. When I was 17, right before I got saved, I will never forget. Y'all know I played basketball all the time. I love basketball. I think basketball is the greatest game on the face of the earth. I think if there's one game that we play in heaven, it'll be basketball. I don't know if we will or not, uh, but I will be able to jump, brother, uh, and over the planets. And uh, I, I'll take anybody on when we get there. But I, I think, and that's all I did. But I'm going to tell you this. I remember when I, before I got saved, I got bored with playing ball. I remember the boys, we'd get together and we'd play ball. And I remember when we got through, I remember thinking, there must be more to life than this. There's got to be more than just getting up, having fun, eating, going back to sleep, getting up, having fun, working, eating, going back to sleep. Going to here, going to the movies, playing ball, listening to music. There's got to be more. I remember thinking that. I remember thinking right before I got saved, I was bored. I remember thinking I was bored. I was 18 years old and I thought, is this it? I, I remember thinking that. I remember thinking, this is life. I mean, I'm 18 now. I'm, I'm grown. I'm legal. I can do anything I want. What, what's the meaning of life? I remember thinking that. And God was getting me ready to, uh, to get saved. I mean, I was bored with life. I knew there had to be some greater meaning than just existing. And the third question was, where am I going? You know what young people want to know today? What's the future? 
What does the future hold for us? So I want to talk to you about them three things this morning. Try to answer those questions. Where did I come from? That question is debated in colleges, on campuses, across America, every single day of the week. Where did I come from? There's only two answers possible to that question. Number one, somebody made us and put us here. Or number two, we got here all by ourselves by accident. And everybody believes one of them two uh, answers. I'm going to say this morning, brother, uh, if there is no alternative... You know what they believe out there in the world? They believe in what we call the Big Bang. And they believe that billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions, way, 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 back younger so far, nobody need to tell. All of a sudden there's this big, like that. And the sun had an explosion on it. And this blob split out of the sun, and it went floating out here into outer space. Now, they don't know where the sun come from, and they don't know what made the sun hot, and they don't know how the sun got there, and they don't know how outer space got there. They have no clue. They have a leap of faith that nobody in here is, uh, has, is prepared to take. They talk about us having faith believing the Bible. you got to have a lot of faith to believe that once upon a time there was nothing, and then once upon a time something. you got to be a fool to believe that, brother. It just don't make sense. There had to be a time when there wasn't nothing in some. There can't be a creation without a creator. And this blob went out here in outer space and it just stuck right out here in outer space all by itself. And it started spinning. It started going around. If it had went any farther away from the sun, we'd have froze to death. If it had stopped any closer, we'd have all burned up. 93 million miles away from the sun, it stopped. And it started spinning. And it started spinning like this. And you know what it started spinning? And, and it going around the earth, around the sun, like this. Every 360 some odd days. Going like this. See? That's what's happening. Did you know that you are, help me Tracy. Did you know that, uh, did you, did you know that you are thousands of miles away from where you when I started preaching? Do you know when I started preaching this morning, we was way, way, way over yonder? Thousands of miles from here. It ain't no wonder you feel so scatterbrained, is it? Amen. Really. I mean, brother, we're going like this, see? We're going like this. Round, 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 round. We're not only spinning every 24 hours, we're rotating around the sun every 360 some odd days. Now, I'm going to tell you something, brother. They believe, you know what they believe? They believe that absolutely happened by chance, by accident. Think about that. Think about that. Can you imagine? Can you imagine now? You've got to believe that all this order came out of chaos. And that a blob of mass split off the sun and comes out here and then just cools off by itself and starts spinning. And this order came out of chaos by itself. Now, if you got any sense at all, and if you know the first law of thermodynamics, which means uh, everything goes to pieces unless somebody messes with it. If you don't know this into this building, this paint will someday start chipping off. Uh, these curtains will get dirty. This stuff will start rotting and falling apart. The only way this building can become better is for an outside force to intervene and mess with it. Your car, if you leave your car setting, the tires will rot right off of it. The motor will burn out. Nothing gets better by itself. There has to be an outside force coming in. You don't clean... Does your house just clean... Let me tell you something. Leaves blow on my carport. I have no idea why stuff like that happens. I have a yard, an acre big, and when the leaves come blowing up through there, they'll get right on my carport. I can take a broom and sweep them off, and another puff of wind will come by, and they'll be right back there. Why does that happen? Why don't wind blow them leaves over in a nice little pile so I can burn them? I'll tell you why. Because there is no such thing as order and design without an outside force uh, entering in. Your car don't get better. Your house, you know, your body, you, you didn't just wake up on and, and look as good as you do now. And Lord, that's a scary thought. Uh, I mean, I would hate to see you then. Uh, but uh, you, you didn't just get up this morning and you ever hair in place and your teeth. You had to work on yourself a little bit. So somebody has to work on the... On on the universe. And somebody said this. They said, well, that blob came out there and that blob started rotating around the sun. And get this. 
It's three-fourths water, man. It's three-fourths water. This blob who split split out of a ball of fire is three-fourths water. Yeah, right. I mean, you believe that? Uh, listen, three-fourths, this ball split out of the fire, and it's solid fire, and it goes out. Where did all that water come from? It's like them two little boys out there looking at the ocean, and they'd never seen the ocean before. And one of them looked out there, and he said, Man, that is a mess of water. And the other one said, Yeah, just think, that's just the top of it. The time has changed, and it's 20 minutes till 12. Wake up. Uh, but anyway, there's a lot of water underneath that. There's a lot underneath that you can't see. Where it come from? Where did it come from? There ain't none on Mars. They're trying their best to prove life's on Mars. There ain't never been no life on Mars unless the Lord let a demon go by there and, and do, make, some, uh, make a sphinx face or something like that to fool the suckers down here. There ain't no, no life on Mars, brother. God put life on planet Earth. God put it here. i tell you where you come from, students of Harvard. God made you. God designed you. You're not an animal. You didn't come from a monkey. I mean, you might act like one, but you didn't come from one. You might look like one. You did not come from one. God made you special and God made you... Listen, let me tell you the difference between you and an animal. You don't have hair all over you, some of you. Uh, You don't have fur. Put it that way. Animals have fur. They're not born naked like people are. They go fur on them. You're born naked. You've got to have clothes on to cover your neck. You don't have animals don't have a God consciousness. No animal has a God consciousness. A dog can go up and take a bone away from another dog and go over there and eat it and not feel bad about it at all. You can't do that. If you take something that ain't yours, your conscience bothers you. There's something inside you. That's not an accident. That didn't just happen, brother. God put something inside us. And that's what they don't want to admit at Harvard. They don't want to admit that because when you start admitting to God, then you start thinking, well, maybe we're responsible for Him or to Him. And then maybe there is such a thing as right and wrong. And then maybe the Bible is true and you get yourself in trouble. Where did I come from? You came from God. Have you ever met anybody that says, I'm an agnostic? How many of you ever anybody that says, I'm agnostic? Now, agnostic is somebody who don't have enough nerve to be an atheist. Atheist means no God. Ah, ah, theist. Theist. No God. Ah, theist. Agnostic means ag, no, knowledge. Knowledge. It's the same word as like a Latin word, ignoramus. That's right. (laughs) And so when a professor gets up in college and he says, I'm agnostic, what he's really saying is, I'm ignoramus. That's what he means. And it means ignosco, without knowledge. I don't know. And did you know what they teach kids in college now is that you can't really know anything for sure? That's what they teach you. How many of you have been to a college classroom and heard that philosophy taught? Raise your hand. Look at that. All over us here this morning. They teach you that there's no such thing as absolute right or absolute wrong. Get me down just one hair, Brother Mike. Uh, just a hair. There's no such thing as absolute right and absolute wrong. So truth is relative. Right and wrong is relative. Whatever you feel like is right is right. Whatever you feel like is wrong is wrong. And you have to decide what's right for you. Have you heard them tell that on TV? Have you heard them say that? Whatever you think, they said, no, you're not, you shouldn't judge other people because whatever they feel is good for them is good for them. Whatever they feel, you become your own God and you don't really know if there is such a thing as absolute right or absolute wrong without knowledge. So here's what they do. They get you in the college classroom and they say, now kids, uh, we don't really know anything for sure. We feel one professor got up and he said, uh, he said, we don't know nothing for sure. He said, I doubt everything. He said, I doubt that we exist. He said, I doubt that. He said, there's one thing I don't doubt, and that is that I doubt. That's the only thing he knew for sure is that he didn't know nothing. That's right. And brother, that's what they try to tell you in college. Are you listening to me? The only thing they know for sure is that you really can't know nothing. So you spend $30,000 going to college for four years and get your degree and come out and find out you can't know nothing for sure. You got it all. I'm telling you what, brother, you listen to me this morning, I can tell you, you you do know something for sure. I can tell you this morning, I know for sure there's a God. I know for sure there's a, there's a book. That's true. And I know for sure there's a God. You say, no, you just think you know. No, sir. I met Him. I've talked to Him. He's talked to me. I've fellowshiped with Him. I know there's a God this morning. I'll tell you something happened to me this morning. I was coming down the road 
and that sun was shining, and I was a little bit pining because my girls are gone. And I come down the road and I stuck in a tape. And I stuck in a tape that I've been listening to. I've been listening to it about every Sunday morning. It's an old preacher named Zeb McDarris. You probably remember Brother Zeb McDarris. And brother, I tell you what, that old boy got to singing, How firm foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in His excellent Word. And people got to shouting. And about that time, I passed the church that I got saved in, Nebo Baptist Church. And I got to started thinking about how the Lord been good to me. He said, Fear not, I am with thee. Though be not dismayed, I am thy God and will still give thee aid. And that verse it said, And through fiery trials, uh, uh, though the pathway may go some, I will not, I will not desert to foes. That soul that on Jesus Jesus doth lean for repose. I will not, I will not desert to its foe. I got to thinking how many foes I've had. That's enemies. And I got to thinking how the Lord hadn't deserted me to my foes. He hadn't just left me. He hadn't just said, all right, Danny, I'm leaving you alone. I started crying coming down the road this morning. I about started shouting in the car. I don't know I'm going to hold it in until I get to church. Amen. <laughs> I thought, no, I want to wait. I want to wait. Hold it in. But I'm glad to report to you this morning. I know there's a God in heaven. I know He'll fellowship with you. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I'm His own. He convicts me when I do wrong. He blesses me when I do right. I know where I come from this morning. I know there's a God. I know there's a God. Hallelujah. I know there's a God. I ain't going to charge you a dime to tell you I know there's a God. There is a God. There is a God. There is a God. Now, if you don't believe there's a God, you believe we got a conscience by accident. You believe the air got here. We can breathe in air by accident. You believe we can see our eyes are like a camera that no man can duplicate. Did you know what this? Yes, I'm focused on my watch. I'm focused on my Bible. I'm focused on mighty mouth. I'm focused on the, on, the, on, on the wall over here. I'm focused on the speaker. I'm focused on Andy. There ain't a camera man can make can do that. And they say we're working on technology. Technology has invented this camera. It'll get this if it gets this microphone clear. That's bl- that's blurry. And if it gets him clear, this is blurry, right? Watch my eyes. Clear, 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 clear. Last time I had my eyes checked on. I mean, I can tell a little difference up close now that I'm getting old. But I tell you what, for my, my my eyes last time I had them checked was 2015. That's right. And man, I, and I, I, and I looked at you, I can sign read that fire thing back there on the wall. I said, glory to God, hallelujah. There ain't a camera man can make can do what my eyes can do. And they say, well, that just got here by accident. And they can't even make one. Let alone let it happen by accident. They can't even make one like that. You know, I've, I've got a bunch of other stuff I want to talk about this morning, but I get started on this stuff. I mean, there's just no end to it. How many, how many things that if you took the letters of the alphabet and you took all the letters of the alphabet, let's say, let's say, and, and made them up a hundred million of them, letters, and put them up in an airplane. And you went over at Morganton on this plane, and a man took that box of letters and slung them out. And it just so happened that they spelled out Webster's Dictionary over there on Interstate 40. Perfect, without missing a word. Do you really believe that could happen? I don't. I don't believe. You say, well, there's a chance. That chance is so small that no, you know that ain't going to happen. You say, but it might. You got a problem even if that had happened. Where'd the airplane the letters come from? You see, there's got to be a God. There's got to. Somebody said, well, the genes and chromosomes and everything, it just. They just happen to work where our blood system flows, you know, and, and we have a we have you ever noticed how you're made? I don't mean to sound awful, but think about how you're made, brother. I mean, listen, you know how your nose is turned? What if God what if your nose was turned up the other way? <laughs> Some people say, Well, I like guess all the time. It would rain in there. You'd have to run around like this all the time, you know, put you a little you know, uh, umbrella with them things like like uh, they wear, you know. But look, that's what somebody said. They said if God wanted you to smoke, He'd have turned your nose up the other way, like a, like a chimney. Uh, but but did you know what, brother? It's turned the right way. You're talking about how your eyes look. At my eyes in a little like a little socket right here, and that way, if I hit something, ooh, it, it don't hit my eye. It just hits these bones out here. That's an accident, right? 
If evolution was true, your eye would have been right here. You know? I mean, think. You've got to believe all that happened by accident. Legs that we can walk. Arm, your shoulder, all the different directions. My arm can raise that way, that way, that way, that way, that way, all, all this way. All that comes from my shoulder. That's just an accident, evolution. You believe that the airplane flew over and all the chromosomes and genes and everything just lined it out and spelt the, the words of the encyclopedia by accident. I'm telling you, brother, you know what your problem is? You got room for rent up in your, up in your noggin, man. Your brain went to Disney World and never did come back. Or else you have a moral reason for rejecting the Bible. And the truth is, that's what's wrong with most of that crowd. They want to live like a devil and drink beer on the weekends and, and shack up. And they don't want to have to answer to God. So they convince themselves there is no God. But if you'll think about it, and think about your thoughts, and think about your body, and how your body is made, brother, there is no way it could be an accident. Where did we come from? God Almighty put us here. Let me say hurriedly this morning, what are we doing here? That's a good question, isn't it? What are we doing here? What are we doing? You say, what the, to have fun, get married, raise a family, then, then what? You think that's all fun? <laughs> one girl said, one girl said, well, I don't want the Lord to come back so, so I can get married. You know, it's funny how stupid girls are. You mean you'd rather be married than go to heaven? Tell them married people. <laughs> I mean, I'm not knocking marriage. God wants about everybody to be married. God wants just about everybody to be married. But I'm going to tell you something, brother. You know heaven's better than anything we got down here. Anything. Lord have mercy. Hey, boys are just as dumb. Boys say, well, I want to wait till I can get married. Now, listen, brother. God's got something a whole lot better for us. Listen, what are you doing here? What's the purpose of life being here anyway? Not just to get an education. Nothing. Everybody needs to get educated. You ought to get some schooling. Get some training. Make something out of yourself. But listen, brother, that is not the reason of your existence. You are getting ready to take out into eternity. You're just preparing for heaven or hell. One of the two. Backstage getting dressed. Getting ready to come out on stage. We're getting ready for the play. This is rehearsal. The pre real program ain't started yet. That's what this life is. That's the purpose of you being here. Somebody said, I wish we didn't have to get old. Well, we do. We do because of sin. We do because that's the way God designed it. After sin came to this world, if Adam and Eve never sinned, you would never get old. You'd stay the same forever. But since they did, we get old and our bodies age, and then we finally get sick and die. What are we doing here? Thirdly, this morning I'll say this. Where are we going? I'm going to tell you something right now. In, let's see, 100 years from right now, there will not be a person in here living in Morgan or me or Marion or Lenore or wherever you're from. You're going to be somewhere else. Well, that's a long time, preacher. 100 years ain't a long time. I remember when I thought 10 years was a long time. And you know now, I'm going to think 10 years, boy, it, 10 years will go by just like that now. You young people don't realize it. Where are you going to be at? And, and, and the truth is, most people in here this morning, 50 years from now ain't going to be here. You'll be in heaven with the Lord, shouting around His throat, having a good time, or you'll be in hell screaming for a drop of water on your tongue. Now you know what the world believes? They believe you're just like a dog. When you die, that's it. That's the end of you. So have all the fun you can have now. You see the two different philosophies? We believe, give it up now and get it later. They believe, hog all you can now because there ain't no later. That's what they believe. And I'm going to tell you something, brother. Somebody is bad wrong. You say, how do you know you're right, preacher? Because all this other stuff I've been telling you, all the stuff we come from, we had to get here for some reason. Somebody had to put us here, and the Bible's proved to be true in everything else. There is no better explanation than what I give you this morning for your existence on this planet. Young people, you don't realize just how short your life can be. There's not a teenager in here this morning who thinks, I could be gone by tomorrow, I could be gone by the next day. I want to tell you, show you a newspaper article from Rock Hill, South Carolina. This girl right here that you see right here in the corner, 17 years old. 
It's uh, uh, Jamie's cousin. This just happened Thursday, was it, Jamie? Thursday, April 1st. That's what I said. This girl, if I got the story right, was shot to death by a 12-gauge shotgun by some guys that broke in her boyfriend's apartment. She is 17. It tells her whole story right here. 17-year-old gunshot victim attended local school down near, uh, before they moved to Atlanta. And this girl right here, 17 years old, her boyfriend had an apartment, him and another boy, he's 22 or 3, the other boy was 22 years old, they, she's over at the apartment, some guys come beating on the door with hoods on, I think she opened the door, right? She opened the door and they opened fire, pushed her way in, opened fire, killed her and shot the other two, and they're critically injured. That girl, 17, look at her right there. Pretty young lady. Had everything in the world to live for. Smart. Graduating high school this year. Getting ready to go to college. She had no idea. No idea. No idea. That would be the last day she ever lived. And nobody in here does either. It was some kind of a drug deal between them guys, a friend, and some problems like that. And she's just caught in the middle, wrong place, at the wrong time. I trust she was saved. Her name was Heather. I heard about a young man. This boys, these old boys, was wanting to take this girl out, and her daddy wouldn't let him go out with her. And they, you've heard me tell this story. He kept, they kept going over there at night, and the boy said, "You ain't going out with my daughter tonight, tonight, or ever." And they got mad, took off his driveway, spinning tires, slinging rocks. And every night after that, they'd come up there and back up in his driveway and start cussing. Hey, old man, come out here. You know, I'd, and by the time he'd get out there, they'd, they'd take off and sling rocks at his house. And that old fella got mad. He got his gun. And he said, the next night they come out here, I'm going to be waiting on them. Because you call the cops, they're done gone. There ain't nothing to do about it. Them boys riding around town down that evening, and they picked up a 14-year-old boy on the street corner. He said, hey, ma'am, where are you going? He said, I'm just hanging around. You want to go ride around? He said, sure. And they hopped in the car in the back seat. They went riding around for a while, and then about that time, one of them said, hey, let's go over and aggravate the old man. And they packed up in his driveway, and that boy sitting in the back seat. Fourteen years old, wasn't in trouble, wasn't on drugs, just with the wrong people at the wrong time. And they backed up in there cursing, hollering, screaming, and that old man got mad and they started getting rocks and he cut down under that gun and that bullet went through that back window and hit that 14-year-old boy in the back of the head and killed him just like that. That all depends. There ain't no purgatory. You're going to one of two places. Where did I come from? God made me. What am I doing here? I'm getting ready to leave and go out into eternity. Where am I going? That depends on what you do with Jesus Christ. God's Son. I answered life's three greatest questions. So I don't believe it, preacher. I'll go out there, go to Harvard and see if I can give you an answer. You know what their answer is? You evolved from a lower species of animal that we don't know where it comes from. You're here trying to make yourself happy and we have no clue where you're going. That's their answer. That's theirs. My guess, we're here getting ready to go out into eternity and we're headed to heaven or hell. If you can find a better answer, come and tell me about it. We'll see who's right. Let's stand. Bow our heads to pray.